the Xavier Institute for Gifted Children. Hey, Henry! We've got our X-Men exercises in the Danger Room in 10 minutes. You coming? Just give me 60 seconds while I finish off this critique of Marx's Das Kapital, Kitty. I really feel I have to tighten up my slightly rusty Russian grammar here. My dear Naomi, I know you've only been gone on this lingerie shoot for 48 hours, but it feels like an eternity. Are you home yet? I just sped read a new analysis of the Clinton administration and am absolutely aching to talk to someone about it. My dear sweet Henry McCoy, is that the new Joe Klein book? It's fabulous, isn't it? So even-handed, considering his impeccable liberal credentials. I've missed you so much these last few days that I can barely articulate myself. It's horrible being back in this big, empty penthouse and all on my own again. Believe me, darling, no one could be as lonely as I am right now. Why don't we kill two birds with one stone and finally get together tonight? For croissants and cappuccino, perhaps? Eee, I'd love to, Henry. I really would, but as you know, I only just discovered my mutation recently, and I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it face to face yet. I'm sorry I'm so weak, but what we have is so special. I'm scared to death we'll rush things and ruin everything. Oh, I'm the one who should be sorry, Naomi. An international model with a PhD in infrared astronomy has more to lose than I could ever understand. But this impatience only comes from my love for you, my darling. When I'm online with you, I forget for a while what an ugly, flea-bitten wretch I really am. Please, don't talk like that, Henry. You're the most beautiful man in the world, my darling. And I refuse to hear a word to the contrary. Man, this is freaking awesome. I swear to God, this idiot's about 10 minutes away from proposing to be Prosimian. I got beasts right in the palm of my hand here. Uh, well done, Blob. But don't you think this cyber transvestitism you're so addicted to at the moment verges slightly on the perverted? Listen, until Jerry Springer finds me that special 20-ton stripper I asked him for, I gotta take my kicks where I can find him, buddy boy. Well, it's got to be more entertaining than these PG-13 terrorist operations Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are so intent on sending us on. How did the Brotherhood of Mutants end up looking for accounts irregularities in multinational companies? Magneto must be spinning in his grave. So take a break and stick on the Discovery Channel, man. I hear there's some kind of documentary on ape lovemaking rituals on this afternoon. Oh, for God's sake, Blob. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm a mutation, you idiot. I'm not interested in some yellow-toothed chimpanzee. They say it's some kind of special on the female bonobos ape, pal. You know, that exotic type they only found in the Congo back in 1929? The ape some anthropologists believe is the most sensual primate still living in the jungle? Well, maybe I'll just stick it on for a minute or two to see if there's anyone I know. Westchester County Park in a manner of speaking. How are you feeling? Certifiable, Scott. Three more psychic attacks in the space of 12 hours. This is starting to sound just like old times, huh? Come on, Jean. This is nothing compared to what you used to go through back at the hospital. I mean, when your mom and dad first contacted the professor, you'd... Chewed my knuckles down to the bone. I know. I remember it all in perfect detail, Scott. The only difference, of course, is that this time whatever's trying to get through to me isn't being held back by the painkillers or the professor's psychic barriers. What do you think's trying to get through to you? You really want to know? 
I think I've been selected to host an ultra-dimensional entity that wants access to this reality so it can annihilate us like it annihilated a billion worlds before us. It talks to me in Latin and calls itself the Phoenix Force, Scott. It wants to decreate and unravel everything God has ever made. Like I said, certifiable. What time will you reach the Savage Land? 10 or 20 minutes. You should have seen me trying to tell Kitty Pride she wasn't allowed on rescue missions. I think she thinks she's in the Ultimates now or something. You think any of those missing Marines will still be alive? Who knows? These guys they airdropped into Strip Magneto's old base of its super science were top of the range special forces people, Gene. If anyone survived, they're the boys. But radio silence from an entire expedition party doesn't fill me with a huge amount of confidence. I just wish I wasn't gone when you needed me so much. That's really sweet. But there isn't really much you could have done here anyway, to be honest. I'd also be a lot happier if the Professor hadn't swapped Colossus for Wolverine on this thing, too. Put your life in your enemy's hands, Scott. That's Xavier's rule for overcoming difficult personality conflicts. Does he know we're talking over a psychic link? Do we care? I love you, Scott. No matter what kind of state I'm in by the time you get back, I want you to know that the last couple of months have been the best of my crappy little life. Hey, come on. That's crazy talk. Precisely my point, Mr. Summers. I still can't believe what happened here last night, Naomi. Cyclops and Wolverine almost killed each other over Wolverine's little crush on Marvel Girl. The professor put them both in a psychic detention room for an hour to settle their differences, and now he's sent them off to find some missing U.S. Marines in the savage land together. God, why does Xavier keep sucking up the establishment like this, Henry? The U.S. Army were only stationed in the Savage Land to steal advanced mutant technology. I realize Cyclops and Wolverine know the area better than anyone, but why risk mutant lives for a species who are openly conspiring against us? They aren't all against us, Naomi. In fact, our secret sponsor sent a representative this afternoon to see how much money we wanted for this legal battle against Iceman's parents. I'm really missing Bobby right now, you know? I spent all afternoon just sitting in his room listening to that awful CD collection of his. Poor baby! I wish I'd been there to hold your hand. But what makes you think the X-Men's financiers are acting out of altruism, Henry? Isn't their anonymity a sign that Xavier could be controlling their minds? No, they need to remain anonymous because funding our mission could be devastating to their international reputations, Naomi. Aurora and Kitty raised a similar point at a recent tutorial. But I sincerely believe this is one instance where the professor isn't meddling with anyone's neurons. Meaning what? That this Hellfire Club you told me about buys you jump jets and state-of-the-art security systems out of the goodness of their hearts? L-O-L. <laughs> That's what I love about you, Henry McCoy. Your almost childlike belief that human beings aren't the most stupid, self-centered species that ever walked the Earth. It's so sweet. Bobby Drake's place, Long Island. Senator Turk, Senator Turk, you got anything to say about the Iceman's $50 million lawsuit against Charles Xavier and the X-Men, sir? That I do, my boy. That I most definitely do. I've just been in consultation with young Bobby's parents, and after reviewing the boy's injuries, we've agreed to pursue the X-Men for a far more appropriate $100 million. Young Bobby himself will be making a public statement to this effect on the courthouse steps tomorrow morning. Senator Turk, one more question, please? Forgive me, young man, but I'm afraid I have a dinner engagement with my wife of 50 years, and as you know, Andrew Border Turk never keeps a lady waiting. 
If that old creep thinks I'm going to say the professor was brainwashing us to break the law up in Westchester, he's out of his tiny freaking mind. That old creep just paid all your medical bills, Bobby Drake. Your father and I would never have been able to pay for the kind of treatment you just had, not in a million years. So let him break my legs again, Mom. I'd rather be in a wheelchair than take money from the guy who bullied Clinton into kickstarting the Sentinel attacks. Turk doesn't care about us. He's just seizing his big chance to close down the school and destroy the professor. Mutants are the single biggest threat to all those religious groups he represents, and there's nothing he'd like more than packing us off to the gas chambers, man. Bobby, please, could we all get a little less hysterical here? Could we maybe try to have a conversation again instead of listening to Xavier's lunatic rhetoric? When the guys at the car plant found out my son was in the X-Men, I was the first to be laid off in the next wave of redundancies. When your mother's friends found out about you, half of them actually crossed the street to avoid her, and the other half stopped talking to her completely. There ain't a day goes by where someone doesn't vandalize the porch or put filth through the mailbox, and it's all because our little boy had some bad luck with his genes. This lawsuit is the first piece of good luck we've had since we found out what was wrong with you, Bobby. This money could mean a fresh start in a whole new place. And it's just small change to these billionaires who've been bankrolling Xavier. I hate to put you in this position, son. I really do. But if you don't press ahead with this compensation claim for your injuries, the three of us are going to be out in the street inside six weeks. Hi, Naomi. Storm and I were on dishwashing duty tonight, and it all felt very strange. She was telling me about a hostage crisis in Louisiana, but I wasn't even listening. I still can't believe we dated all that time. What did we have in common? Why do I feel so disconnected from anyone who isn't you at the moment? Have you ever wondered if you've maybe joined the wrong side, Henry? Do you ever think you might be happier attacking mankind instead of helping them? After all, Homo sapien has hardly been kind to you over the years. Nevertheless, I like the professor and appreciate that his ideas are the best chance of survival for either species, Naomi. Whether it's balancing chemical equations or building a car from scratch, kids can learn more here in a single day than you learn in a lifetime of regular schooling. Personally, I just can't understand how an intelligent guy like you can follow the doctrine of that hypocrite. Where did he get the nerve to write these papers on non-violent solutions to post-human problems when he murdered Magneto in front of 5,000 witnesses? Well, between you and me, that's not exactly how things transpired back in Washington, darling. I'm telling you this in the strictest confidence, and only because I know I can trust you with all my heart. But Magneto isn't really dead, you know. The whole thing was an elaborate ruse. The Savage Land, a vast southern hemisphere landmass, once used as a base by Magneto and his Brotherhood of Mutants. Well, what's the verdict, Wolverine? The Marines are dead, all right, but it wasn't no animals that killed them. The entire troop was taken down before anyone could fire a shot, and their bodies were dragged away. Direction? North. It's bizarre to think that this was all just one big desert until Magneto started manipulating the environment and messing around with all those evolutionary experiments. His daughter told me he was trying to create man from scratch again, but breed out all the nasty little human imperfections. You ever think about this place, Wolverine? I dream about it all the time. The architecture, the sci-fi tech, the girl singing ballads in that weird mutant language. Summers, would you do me a favor? Would you stop trying to find something we got in common? Because I ain't ever gonna like you, bub. What? Shut up a second. Stand still and don't make a sound. <laughs> that was a dinosaur, by the way. Really? I hadn't noticed. Aya! Kitty! Oh my god! I just saw a spider the size of a
of a dog and freaked out for a second. I'm totally sorry, Wolverine. I'm cool now. Seriously. The world, my darling. And I refuse to hear a word to the contrary. Man, this is freaking awesome! I swear to God, this idiot's about 10 minutes away from proposing to me, Prosimian. I got beasts right in the palm of my hand here. Uh, well done, Blob. But don't you think this cyber transvestitism you're so addicted to at the moment verges slightly on the perverted? Listen, until you... Believe me, darling, no one could be as lonely as I am right now. Why don't we kill two birds with one stone and finally get together tonight? For croissants and cappuccino, perhaps? Eee, I'd love to, Henry. I really would, but as you know, I only just discovered my mutation recently, and I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it face to face yet. I'm sorry I'm so weak, but what we have is so... The Xavier Institute for Gifted Children. Hey, Henry! We've got our X-Men exercises in the Danger Room in 10 minutes. You coming? Just give me 60 seconds while I finish off this critique of Marx's Das Kapital, Kitty. I really feel I have to tighten up my slightly rusty Russian grammar here. My dear Naomi... I know you've only been gone on this lingerie shoot for 48 hours, but it feels like an eternity. Are you home yet? I just sped read a new analysis of- Special! I'm scared to death we'll rush things and ruin everything! Oh, I'm the one who should be sorry, Naomi. An international model with a PhD in infrared astronomy has more to lose than I could ever understand. But this impatience only comes from my love for you, my darling. When I'm online with you, I forget for a while what an ugly, flea-bitten wretch I really am. Please, don't talk like that, Henry. You're the most beautiful man in the Clinton administration, and I'm absolutely aching to talk to someone about it. My dear, sweet Henry McCoy, is that the new Joe Klein book? It's fabulous, isn't it? So even-handed, considering his impeccable liberal credentials. I've missed you so much these last few days that I can barely articulate myself. It's horrible being back in this big, empty penthouse and all on my own again.